الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to this unique program in which we are exploring a pertinent and important contemporary question that affects an increasing number of our Muslim communities. And that is, how can we help new Muslims, those people who choose to accept Islam, to feel that they are a part of the community? How can we help them to have a positive experience with Islam so they become thriving and flourishing members of the community and are able to not only benefit from the community but contribute to the community and help our growth as an ummah. Shall I repeat the secret I told you last time? Some of you might remember the secret. The secret was, what we're talking about is not exclusive to converts and reverts to Islam. Good advice is good advice, and much of this advice is good for people in general. We never know the situation of people in our community, or in general, people in general, but in the Muslim community, which is what we're talking about here, we may assume someone has family, someone is educated in Islam, uh, we may actually not know that they may have just decided to return to Islam. They didn't know about it growing up. They may even be learning the basics such as how to pray. So we can never make assumptions about people. And so much of this advice will be good for many people, albeit in particular the topic we are discussing today may be particularly relevant for people who convert to Islam because people who convert to Islam tend to get a lot of special attention. So today, I would like to bring up the controversial question of whether or not people who convert to Islam, whether we should ask them to share their stories publicly. Should we encourage converts and reverts to go on TV, go on TV, to go on TV and explain how they became a Muslim, to go for example, uh, to the mosque and give a speech on how they became a Muslim, to produce written accounts of how they became a Muslim on websites, uh, to do media interviews with the newspaper and so forth. Should we do this or not? This question may not have occurred to you because it is taken for granted that this is something normal. There is so much interest nowadays in conversion to Islam that people take it for granted that converts, even very new converts to Islam, such as people who've only been a Muslim for a month or two, are asked to go, and not only on Islamic media, but even mass media in general, CNN, the BBC, NBC, and so forth, and speak about their experiences. But is this really something we should be doing? I'd like to bring up some points to give a different perspective on this. First and foremost, I believe that when we are dealing with human beings, it is very important to put the best interest of the human being first, both psychologically, socially, and in any other way as well. And one thing to consider is that when people convert to Islam, the path is not always easy, in particular as we know. There may be family problems, if they're married, there may be marital problems, it may even result in a divorce. Uh, one of the very frequent questions that people convert to Islam get asked is, how did your parents react? This is a very personal question and can involve publicly sharing information which is deeply personal. And in addition to that, may not necessarily be information that the other parties involved want to be shared. For example, if you became Muslim and your father kicked you out of your house or your wife left you uh, or, God forbid, the courts took away your children or something happened like that, which did not paint other people in a good light, it might not be respectful to them to go on television and say, yes, my father yelled this and that at me and kicked me out of the house and my auntie did this and so on and so forth. Uh, especially in our communities, we do believe that one should have a certain amount of respect for one's family and even if things happen that are not very good, we don't always share it in public. Uh, and yet sometimes there's an expectation that people who convert to Islam will be very forthright about these things. 
So there is that issue of privacy to consider. It's not only the privacy of the individual convert, but also their friends, their family, and so forth, who may not like it if the convert comes out and speaks about them on television. Especially nowadays, alhamdulillah, we have YouTube, so nothing ever goes away. You give the speech at the mosque one day, it goes on YouTube the next day, uh, alhamdulillah. And there's also just the general um, reality that speaking about something very deeply biographical and personal does involve opening up a lot of yourself to the world. And some people who give these speeches sometimes regret it later. They contact YouTube and say, can you please take my speech down? Because they find that they've said things that maybe six months later or a year later, they think back and they say, well, I, I really wish I hadn't shared that with the world. And indeed, Amir al-Mu'mineen, alayhi salam, he did say that silence is better. Uh, silence that clothes you in the garment of dignity is better than words that bring you remorse. Uh, that sometimes it's safer to be silent. Now, I'm not saying that people should never speak about these things, but just there are certain considerations. I think it's important also when we are inviting converts to speak about their journey to Islam to consider what is the goal? What are we trying to do? Because in my humble opinion, there are good reasons to invite people who convert to Islam to speak about their experiences. Also, there are less good reasons. What are some of the good reasons? For example, we find it inspiring, right? We, we all like to hear inspiring stories, whether it's about religious conversion, overcoming a, a challenge, maybe accomplishing something great, although you have a disability or some great obstacle in your life. Inspiring stories are beloved by all. So maybe we find it inspiring. Maybe some people who are thinking about converting to Islam might empathize with your story and be motivated themselves to come closer to Islam. Maybe it will help people in that regard. Also, to be fully candid, there are some people who do academic studies on converts to Islam. Some of us might have encountered some of these researchers, and it is a choice to decide whether or not one wishes to participate uh, in their academic research, which at the very least, it does put converts to Islam uh, and first-generation Muslims on the map, uh, even though it can be a bit weird to be someone's re research subject. Uh, so these are reasonable uses, but then there are what I would call bad uses things that aren't quite as good. One, big number one, like big flashing giant number one. Agendas. Some media organizations, like the big media organization in England, and I'm not talking about a Muslim one, they sometimes have agendas when doing coverage of Muslims. Some of us might have seen the documentary on new Muslim women or female converts, some of them very new converts. The people who were in that documentary said afterwards that they were completely misrepresented, that they did not at all say or intend the things that were shown on TV. So this is something to be careful of. There may be agendas involved. Also, there is a view among some people. I swear to God, I was told this to my face myself Someone told me once, Amina, you are shirking your responsibility to the West. That as a Western Muslim and as a white Muslim, it is your responsibility to help Eastern Muslims have more self-esteem because they're all looking up to the West and feeling bad about their culture and religion. And you have chosen this religion, although you are white. So you have to help them improve their self-esteem by talking how, about how you became a Muslim. What is wrong with this picture? First of all, self-esteem is an inner thing. You can talk until, proverbially, as we say in the States, until the cows come home about how wonderful Islam is. But if someone has low self-esteem about their religion, it's not going to work. Self-esteem needs to come from the inside. Now we can nurture it, we can help it grow, but if someone appreciates the religion, it needs to come from the, the inside, not from someone who they're being looked up to because of their skin color or their culture. It also, again, sends the message to the convert that they are different. They are not like other people in the community. Sometimes even this praise, oh, you're so wonderful, you're so good, this awe, if you were, of converts can push them away from the community because at the end of the day, first of all, we know we're not any better than anyone else. Second of all, 
it makes us feel that we're not really a sister or brother in the community, that we are something different, and we're always going to be different and excluded. So we don't want to do that. Uh, and I think, ideally, the best time to have people who convert to Islam speak publicly about their stories is when they themselves want to do it, when they feel they have something to share that they think would be positive and valuable, uh, when it comes from inside. Indeed, conversion can be a challenge, and talking is therapeutic, and it may help them to sort some things out, to speak about them. Uh, or some people who have been through challenges may want to express these challenges to the world. If they've discovered new things, they may want to express these things to the world. They may have unique and valuable things to say. These people will oftentimes find ways to say it, whether they're invited to or not. They may write a book, and there are books, for example, Martin Ling's books, uh, or a sister in the U.S. named Diana Masuma Beatty. She wrote a very nice book about conversion to Islam, which is very useful for people who may be interested in this. Uh, when someone has the desire in their heart to speak about it, then by all means, please do give them a platform, and inshallah, you and I will benefit from it. But if they're reticent or they're not quite ready to, we don't want them to do it just because they're being pressured to. Being socially pressured to share very deep and personal information can have a negative impact on someone, and we don't want to have a negative impact on them with respect to the Muslim community. Ultimately, for those of you who are being asked to share your stories, are you a new Muslim? Are you a convert Muslim? Are you a long-standing convert Muslim who's been Muslim for 30 years and is still being asked to share your story? Ultimately, you should feel comfortable saying yes or no to the question. You should feel that if your heart and intuition says yes, then please do share your story. But if you don't want to, people need to accept that too. You are under no obligation to share personal information. Another th and that the same goes for people who are returning to Islam. So maybe you're born Muslim, but uh, you didn't practice for a long time. It's your decision whether or not you wish to share your story. Another thing that I think is important to keep in mind is it's particularly important to be sensitive to genuinely new Muslims. New Muslim is the new euphemism for convert, which makes no sense. Someone calls me a new Muslim. I have been practicing Islam for more than 20 years. I don't know anything else. I'm not a new Muslim. Uh, in fact, people who are much younger than me sometimes call me that. However, there are genuine new Muslims who have been a Muslim for, say, three months or six months. It's not always the best idea to ask them to take on these public platforms. Uh, for one thing, it puts a lot of pressure on them. Uh, public attention, it, it is stressful. Uh, it does cause social pressures. Having your life shared with the entire world uh, can be difficult for people, especially if they don't have experience in media and being in the public eye. Additionally, these are times of their life which are very critical. They're finding their way. They're changing. Uh, honestly, they're going through phases. There's a number of phases of conversion that many people go through. Uh, and this needs to be respected. And it may be that the, the things they say after three months or six months are not going to be the same things that they say after five years or ten years. So it's important to respect this development time, like, like a butterfly growing in a cocoon. Not, not, not to push people too early. Now again, if they want to and they had to have a desire to do it, then by all means, uh, please. But, inshallah, this is something that can also be taken into consideration. So I hope that I have brought up an interesting question to ponder that maybe some of you have never considered before. And I hope, inshallah, this helps to shed new light on the question of how converts are portrayed in the media, uh, whether or not they should be used for media purposes. Uh, and inshallah will help us to be sensitive uh, to the personal growth and best interest of all people in the community. Stay tuned for another exciting episode. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.